this week in post, manually aligning your layers in on one photo. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to in post. Before I get into today's episode about manually blending layers in on one photo 10, I would like you to join my mailing list. What do you get if you do that? Well, first and foremost, you'll get some free stuff. You get some free on one presets, some textures, a bunch of exclusive videos. That's just for people that subscribe to the mailing list. And then throughout the year, I usually throw out a few discounts from my store and so forth. You'll also be the first to hear about any workshops or other special offerings I might be doing. Light email traffic. I don't spam people. I don't share the email list to sell them to anyone. It's really just between you and me. It's a way for you to keep up with what I've been doing, as well as to you know, get some perks and benefits for you know, following along with me, because I really appreciate you joining me week after week. So if you haven't checked it out, go over to my website. You can subscribe right from the main page there and uh, you know, get in on some of the, uh, the freebie action there. So today I want to talk about manually blending layers, or sorry, manually aligning layers in On One Photo 10. Um, I've been asking On One for auto layer alignment for years. It's not there yet, but there is a trick that we can use with one of the blending modes to help us do that. It's something I've been doing for a couple of years. When the alignment is, you know, you're, you're close, but you just need a little bit of a nudge saves me a trip into Photoshop and going through um, what is usually a little bit of a lengthier process. So let's take a look at what we got here. I've got these two photos I took at the shark fin, which if you saw in the field earlier this week, it will look familiar. I've got this one photo where I like that I have this person standing on the rock. And then I have another photo where the waves are really awesome. Now, as I turn off and on that layer, you can see there's little bits of shifts in where the rocks are. I'm going to zoom in right up here to the tip of the fin. And as I shift it off and on, you're gonna see that rock is moving around a little bit. It was very windy up on the tops of the bluffs there. And that probably explains a fair amount of why my tripod moved a little bit. Um, so that happened and I need to address that because what I want to do is combine these two photos and get these wonderful waves here, but with this individual person standing there to give that sense of scale. So what I can do is change the blending mode to difference way down here at the bottom. So here's difference. And this is showing me what is different between the top layer and the bottom layer. I want to show you a, another way of looking at this because it'll really drill at home. If I duplicate this top layer. So now what I have here, these two layers are exactly the same. If I set difference, I get a complete and total black screen. There is nothing different between this layer and this layer. So when I set difference on my top layer and I have a little bit of a shift in my tripod, I'm going to see deltas. So I'm going to zoom in at 100% and find my person on the rock here. So here's my person. Now the person's moving around. If I turn off, see the person's gone. Turn on the layer, I get my difference going on. But what I can see is at the edge of these rocks, this weird like looking, um, I don't even know what to call it. It almost looks really horrible chromatic aberration. That I can use to help manually line things up. If I can get this line pretty crisp, that's gonna mean I'm gonna get this person standing on that same rock pretty well. So with the transform tool, I'm just going to use my arrow keys and start nudging things around. So I'm moving to the right and you can see I'm closing the gap right here on this difference. I don't expect to get a perfect alignment, but I'm going to be able to get pretty darn close. Now, as the more and more black things get, the better it is. Now there's surf and there's birds and there's people moving around, people leaving footprints. So when I look at the photo as a whole, there's still going to be differences. And even above the ridge line here, there's going to be differences. I only care about getting the differences minimized in the area that I'm going to do masking. And that's right in this spot here. I even see differences just based on the sun's reflection hitting what was wet rock versus dry rock and so forth. So as I nudge this around, I'm just looking to get as much black area around this person as I can, and that is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna say that's great, and I'll apply it. 
move back to my fit view, and now I'm gonna turn my blending mode back to normal. From here, I can do my masking and it's gonna be a lot simpler to do. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna actually bring my surf layer up top because uh, this is of most interest to me. And zooming back in, Somewhere around here is my person. Let's quickly lower my opacity. Okay, my person is right about here. B for the brush tool, shrink it down, and let's start to reveal that person there. Okay, now I'll have to do a little bit of back and forth because I'm working with a, you know an imprecise shape here and start to smooth that out, kind of working around that person to bring the surf back in because I'm... I want that surf to be in the background there. Maybe take my refine mask, a smaller amount so it's not too strong. Just kind of click on that to smooth it around. Let's move out, change the mode to in to bring that back in on the person. It's okay if the person's a little bit softer because this is a for sense of scale. Great, that's looking pretty cool. Brush tool, we can also now start to get rid of these other people here. I don't need this person there like that. Same thing with this person here. Because I did that alignment, that's looking pretty good. And then I don't know what I had in terms of sand here. Let's give this a try. Okay, I've got a different color gradation going on there. So I think I'll take care of this person using you know the perfect brush, something like that. See if that, if I get lucky with it. Oh, that's beautiful. Great. Something like that. And then I can take care of the footprints, onesies, twosies, with the perfect brush just to smooth things out and give the illusion that this person standing solo on this rock all by themselves. I can click all the way through here. You get the idea going through this one by one to smooth all of that out. But very quickly, with that simple alignment, and since I'm only using like this area of the photo for that alignment, the rest of it is is okay. I don't have to have a perfect alignment. Even the little nudge on the tripod when I was in the field didn't matter too much. Uh, for stylization, I've actually gone through that process. I'll just show you the finished product here. So this is the final photo. You can see I've done that cleanup on the beach. I've added a little more crispness and color into the, the surf. You can dive into effects really quickly and take a look. So pretty standard fare for me, right? Dynamic contrast. You can see that I'm masking that. Press the O key. I'm not touching it to the ocean. Uh, the sky really didn't matter. And I'm also not adding contrast in this lower corner of the beach. I don't want your eyes drawn there. I want you to see this really cool surf wave type thing going on. Color enhancer. That's really just to bring in the blues, rich in the sky some. Adjustment brush. We got some, some details going on toned down the brightness and brought up a little bit of the warmth. And this is actually a global, I used the brush, but I did a global adjustment with it. And then finally a vignette. So just to draw our eyes in a little bit more. And so that's you know a pretty nice mid-afternoon photo all said and done. And uh, again, that the, the tip of the week here really is that using the difference blending mode can help you manually align your layers in On One Photo 10. And that brings us to the end of another episode of In Post. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, share this with a friend, uh, tell your local photo club, uh, anyone else that you know is looking to improve their photography skills. And again, I would love to hear from you, even if it's just to say hi, uh, however you'd like to reach out to me, social media, comments on the video, you can contact me through my website. It's all good. Until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.